Three, two, one. We're going live. What's up, everybody? It's Tyler with Hook Sets Are Free. It's Friday night, February the 16th, 2024. We've got Frank and Michael already in the house. What's up, guys? Not sure if it's just because Hellabass had um, mentioned in my comment that I was going to be going live, or if you guys got the notification here on YouTube, since I did give you guys about an hour or more of fair warning and posted that I would be going live, but good to see you guys. Maybe Hellabass just wrapped up and is already going to send people over here. Douglas Wagner, Daniel T., what's up, guys? Good to see you in here. Frank got the 30-minute notification. I posted that an hour and a half ago, so give me a little bit of slack. Uh, better than nothing, right? Guys, cheers. We are drinking a little bit of Maker's Mark Cask Strength. I was drinking this about a week ago um, on this stream. And you see the dent that I've made in the bottle. It is not going to get finished tonight, but I will make another decent dent in it. So um, cheers to everybody drinking. And those who are also not drinking tonight, don't know why I poured such a little one to start out with. Cast and Chill, what a great name. That's what we're doing, right? Tonight we're chilling, unfortunately. A little bit too late and too cold to be casting at uh, at nighttime this time of year. Delicious. I've been loving this bottle uh, since I got it. Again, just to give you a quick rundown on it, I told you last time, but this is a, a small batch version of Maker's Mark. 112 proof, so it's it's spicy, but still has a lot of the, the main characteristics of what you'd expect in a Maker's Mark um, of being pretty dang sweet. A lot of vanilla, a lot of cherry on it, but a um, lot more oak than what you'd typically get in their standard 90 proof bourbon. So tonight, we've got a little bit of an unboxing to do, discount tackle, and a couple of others. We've got Hellabass already in here, so he must have wrapped up, I figure. What's up, Rich? What's up, Brendan? Oh, is, is that a fact? Notif okay, so I guess you got to click that notify me button, right? That doesn't happen automatically, I assume. I've got three baits from Bass Pro Shops. Don't know how often you guys go to Bass Pro, but uh, I've got a Cabela's and a Bass Pro pretty close to me, so I do swing by there pretty frequently wow okay so hellabass and the crew all just stopped by 37 people in here out of nowhere hella sent us yeah i i see that darius dustin what's up everybody nate yo yo so nate yeah that's exactly what i'm talking about um there is a new line of baits that bass pro has put out um the soft plastics and hard baits so this is a new wake bait called the Wake Up Call that uh, looks eerily familiar. Um, a bit like the Strike King or I, I the Six Cent Speed Wake and uh, a few others that have come out in recent times. I know this probably came from... The Speed Wake originally from Strike King, but this is the Wake Up Call from Bass Pro. It weighs, oh, I should know the specs, but they've got it listed here. 28 grams, so right at an ounce, 10 centimeters long. So we're looking at four inches. It's got number four hooks on it. This is like a uh, crackle bone. They call it fractured bone. Not sure if you can see the underneath coloring on that, but pretty cool little bone pattern here. Uh, decent paint job on it. And you get that front wide bill on it. So you are going to get that feathered treble in the back, pretty steep cut on it. And it does have a knocker in it as well. So you guys know that, um, <laughs> hella, I do not talk in, uh, in metric, but maybe you're right. I'm sure Frank likes that, being the Canadian that he is. So I do like wake baits, on the other hand. This is a little bit of a wider body. Almost looks 
like hand carved or something of the sort. Um, almost a little bit familiar to say their uh, the glide bait that they put out last year in the Swerve. Kind of that taller profile, but I definitely like it and am curious to try it. So I want to say I spent about 11 or 12 bucks on it. And uh, to me, that's it's worth a go. I've had good success on the Six Sense wake bait. Um, do I have it readily accessible? I throw the black one more than uh, some of these shad patterns, but I've got it in a couple of shad patterns. So you can see that the build is very similar. In fact, kind of makes me want to do a side-by-side. -side. Yeah, I do have a Jacko Mikey there as well, but let's take a look at these side-by-side. Pretty, pretty similar, if you ask me. Even the bill is pretty similar. You get a, a slightly different shape, but uh, similar bait. More of a traditional one knocker, higher pitch. Higher pitch in the Bass Pro. So anyway, I thought I would add that to my collection because wake baits have been a very high confidence bait for me the last couple of seasons. You know, um, I would say probably the, the number one for me, which kind of caught me off guard, has been the KVD 2.5 wake bait. Um, very loud one knocker. And this bait has been extremely productive for me, especially in the summertime. So got one of those and then two of this new square bill of theirs. So this is the Kranken 60, which is a very standard size square bill. Two and two quarter inches, three eighths, out, three -eighths of an ounce, uh, size four hooks on it. And uh, for Frank, should we say 5.7 centimeters and 11 grams? They're really appealing to those who prefer those metrics as well. Now, what I like about this, no problem, Hella. What I like about this, you can probably see that, um, is the color. These paint jobs are actually pretty wicked where you get a ton of translucency. This is called Ghost Shad, but you also get some flash built into that. And uh, I like that a lot. In high sun, I don't know exactly how much of that you're going to get, but this is a excellent um, square bill for clear water. Subtle little rattle on there. Red eyes and good stock hooks on them. So um, I would say good, not great, but might not need to be changed out. Um, they are perfectly sized. So I am pleasantly impressed, surprised, if you will, with uh, this new square bill. I think I paid $5.99 for them. So I picked two of them up and uh, the colors are just pretty wicked looking. Now, that is why I got them. I have a bunch of square bills. I have my tried and true. I probably prefer the Lucky Craft and the KVD more than most, but I also will throw the Dual Hardcore. I'll throw the Six Sense Crush. I'll throw the Jackal MC series um, and some variations of KVD and Lucky Craft that are rattling. And then like the OSP Blitz as well. But uh, I don't mind throwing a new one into the mix every now and again and seeing kind of how it compares. So this color here is called Brown Craw. And it is a matte color. Take a look at this bad boy. So they have a, a handful of matte colors, a handful of ghost colors, and then some of the more traditional ones as well. So... That is a big part of what attracted me to these guys was the finishes on them, if we're being honest. Um, 
not a crazy price tag at $599. Honestly, probably um, somewhat comparable to what the old XPS square bills were. But I think on the whole, this has been revamped and upgraded in terms of quality pretty significantly. So had to get my hands on a couple of those. Let me catch up on the comments real quick, and then we'll move on to the discount tackle unboxing. I don't know if I have the Biolab wake, but um, I've definitely seen them before. You got some of those old wake shads? Yeah. Um, I'll throw them if you got them. You know what I'm saying? Very true, Brennan. The KVD 2.5 wake is pretty wicked. Like, surprisingly good. Oh, Brennan, you're just going to be, like, rich like that? You got to get in and get out? Man, I got some goodies in here. Um, who knows how many of them you would like, but go ahead, dude. If you got to get out of here, I understand. Um, it is late-ish. But it's a Friday night, so those of you who are down to hang out for a little bit, let's do that. Grab a drink if you've got access to one, or if you're of age. Brendan, don't. Maybe that's why Brendan's getting out of here. Midwest Fisherman, what's up? It has been a minute since you've been on one of the live streams. Good to see you. Danny boy. That is true. Danny's been gone for a while. Where you been? Travis Stearman in the house. Well, what's up, dude? I really don't think you ever jump in here. I really only see you uh, in TK's streams, but not surprised that you're in Hella's streams as well. Um, you seem like you're definitely a guy to know when it comes to custom baits. So that's interesting to know that Folk Custom Baits helped with the new colors of the Bass Pro Baits. Um, I will say that is, if so, whoever it was, uh, did a great job. There's some fantastic color patterns. I was struggling with figuring out which ones to get. Because like I said, there were a handful of ghost patterns in Chad, Bluegill, and Craw, and then a handful of matte colors. Not all of them were um, in stock and readily available at Cabela's when I was there, but um, take a look at it if you're interested. See what kind of colors they've got going. Okay, discount tackle. Somehow, we're already nearing the 4th of July. I don't know. Uh, they're rotating through some of these stickers that maybe they've got a ton of, but anyway, uh, I spent $81 in this month's package so not substantial i'll tell you what i paid for one of these first out of the pack is the eight inch berkeley coal shad okay so i guess these are finally back around um the error that was made on the first run has been fixed and the new ones are in stock so i showed you guys the six inch just uh a week or two ago and now i've got the eight inch in my hands as well so just a couple of them. Um, I was impressed with what I saw in the six inch. And I do like a slightly larger swim bait for certain applications. And I think this is going to play. So I think I, I got two of them both in HD patterns. I don't know why I'm a sucker for the HD patterns, but they look good. And I will say with power bait, they don't stink um, in the way that HD patterns do with other baits. So the 8-inch coal shad, here we go again with the same packaging, just like what you get with Bass Pro, uh, 79 grams, 2 and 3 quarter ounces. Comes with a 2 aught hook on there, okay? Um, I believe this is a slow sink bait straight out of the pack. Don't quote me on that, though. I'm not 100% sure. So this does have the power bait scent on it. And really only smells like power bait. It does not smell like paint, which is what you get a lot of times with these HD patterns. So um, here's what I really like about the coal shad, especially compared to other baits, is just how much tail there actually is and how slow 
you will be able to fish this thing. So um, that excites me. So I'm not sure if I will end up weighting it down to keep it down or um, just seeing how effective I can be in swimming it slow through the upper or middle portion of the water column. But I'm excited about trying this out. This is the HD rainbow trout color. And then I did get an HD gizzard shad. So for those of you who may or may not know um, what makes this different from a mag draft per se, um, is one, the obvious spot for a nail weight right in the belly, in the center. Two spots, actually. Um, it's really this, this hook hanger in addition to the slot for you to be able to put the hook, okay? That's a little bit standard like you'd see in other baits, but you put your hook in there, in the slot, and then you clip your hook in there. And it will stay there and not come out nearly as easily as what you'd see on a mag draft or something of the sort. So that will hang there until you set the hook and it will come free pretty easily. You still have that swivel on there, heavy duty hardware. Um, and the main thing is that tail and the action of the bait. So um, same concept as the mag draft, but very different swim in terms of how it acts in the water. And that intrigues me for sure. So um, I will say I am curious. The mag draft for me has always been um, almost too speed sensitive of a bait. So um, I quite like the mag draft, but there are certain situations where it just will not get bit and there's not a lot to do to change it up except weight it and swim it in a different part of the water column. So this being the same type of design, but with a different action and the ability to swim it slower um, and perhaps faster. I don't know if uh, it will blow out if you burn it, but I know that it can be swum much slower and still have a great kick on it. So that right there is what caught my attention. So HD Rainbow and then the HD Gizzard, which I'm happy to pull out if you want me to just for a second for you to see it. Don't want to waste too much time taking stuff out and putting it back in, but um, I'm not going to fish these for a hot minute. Some of my lakes have actually uh, thawed in the last month. It's been a weird winter here in Colorado, especially down in the Denver metro area. Uh, so I am optimistic and hopeful that I will be able to start fishing sooner than most years. Uh, starting in you know a couple weeks, maybe even earlier than that, but definitely in the month of March and not April. So I believe this is HD Gizzard. It sure is. HD Gizzard Shad. So I fish a couple of lakes that have some absolutely gigantic Gizzard Shad. And um, I think this is going to be a good little player in those couple of lakes. And then a lot of my lakes here get stocked with trout a couple of times a year, but especially in the spring. Um, so I'm excited. These two seem to kind of like no brainer types of colors for me. I am forcing this thing back in and it's not wanting to cooperate. This is what I feared would happen. I don't want you guys just staring at me looking down like it's some sort of live scope tournament. Um, but let's see if we can get this hoe back in here and move on with the program. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how many comments I have missed, uh, but I, I apologize for not responding to all of you. Dustin Taylor says the cool shad looked great. Um, when did it look great? Have you fished it? Or just when you looked at it or what? Sure smells like power bait. Um, not mad about that. I've always been a fan of power bait. So in my eyes, that's a good thing. Ooh. Bobby Balsa says, maybe I'll try that then. I like my mag drafts. Yeah, for sure. Um, if you'd like that type of bait, then definitely try these out. Um, I would not go so far as to say that this is a knockoff bait of the mag draft. Uh, same concept, different bait. That that honeycomb 
and the size of the tail and just how much tail there is on it makes it totally different. So um, give it a whirl. Bobby, I don't know about that real slow cadence. I would, I call it a medium slow to maybe even a medium speed retrieve on the mag draft, especially on the freestyle. Uh, more medium slow to slow on like an eight inch, but on the smaller mag drafts, the five and the six inch, um, it's definitely sensitive to where it needs to be swum at a steady speed, which in my opinion is medium to medium slow. You really cannot creep it because um, it'll just stop kicking. But I'm with you. Nate, I did not get the hangover. Good question, Bobby. I don't know if they make one that resembles blueback, but they very well might. So take a look into it. So the hangover, I was pretty tempted by. And then I've heard just such bad things on the whole about it that I'm kind of freaked out to give it a go. I mean, obviously for people like Ben Milliken, um, it's going to be a little bit easy to uh, ignore all of that and figure out how you like to fish it. Um, you spend enough time on the water and you start to understand a bait. So I think all the negative press about it has been people who maybe didn't give it enough of a shot. Um, so I take that with a grain of salt, but at the same time, you know, it makes me a little bit skeptical, right? And there are other line through baits on the market at this point. Talked about that last time. And in fact, I've got one in my hands right now. This is a smaller bait, but they make this in a six inch and a four and a half inch. This is the Z-Man Molotron. Um, and it's actually pretty sick. So they make this in a couple of sink rates as well. So rate of fall eight in the six inch. And this color is called silver mullet. So I'm not a saltwater fisherman. I don't have mullet in my waters, but um, this color appealed to me and uh, looks bait fishy enough for me to have wanted to try it. Probably didn't need to destroy the packaging like I'm doing right now, but um, but I want to get it out of here. And odds are I'm not giving it away, so deal with it. You know what I'm saying? Trash. Okay, so it comes in a clamshell, which is cool. Um, not a bad thing whatsoever. Who knows how much I will actually keep it in the clamshell. Um, I had already bought one of these in each size. So I bought one in this more traditional, I think they call it glow something, glow minnow, glow mullet, um, which is a great color. And then I bought the four and a half inch in, oh, this is like their nighttime color. I don't know what to call it, but um, I did rig it up last time around because um, when I opened the Bass Mafia Dangerous Loaded Swim Bait. Somebody was talking about how they're hard to actually thread the line through the bait. So I did that live, and it was kind of a wreck. Uh, difficult to thread, but I did get it figured out. And then for the sake of comparison, I tried it on this guy, and it was much easier on this dude. So um, to my knowledge, there's not a lot of line through top hook swim baits on the market right now um but this is one of them and it seems like a great bait the hook actually does click into the top of the bait into the harness system and i quite like that so here's that color i was just referring to which i've already butchered and forgotten about this is the silver mullet Pretty bait fishy. Looks like a shad. So works for me. Um, has that Huddleston tail on it and does have a lot of action to it. Um, I think it may be a little bit of a sensitive bait uh, in terms of speed, but has that 
top hook that clicks in, which is awesome. And then it's also made of a Laztec, which it's hard not to be a fan of that. It has a little bit of a rattle in it. My dog's whining, so I can't even hear the rattle. But there's also a slot for a rattle in the tail, which uh, you can go ahead and add if you want as well. So cool design, line through, a Laztec, top hook with a wedge tail. Kind of hard to beat. And they're pretty affordable as well. Um, actually, rather affordable. $11.04 at Discount Tackle. So. Just a quick update, I spent $13.49 on each of the 8-inch coal shads and then $11.04 on the Molotron in the 6-inch. So all on sale at Discount Tackle. If you don't already shop at Discount Tackle, do use my link. If Daniel T is in the house, oh, he's already dropping links. Yo, Daniel T is my man. I appreciate it. If you're interested in any of this stuff, Copy and paste those links from the chat. That'll take you directly to Discount Tackle, but using my affiliate link, which I would greatly appreciate. I do have a relationship with Discount Tackle. Help them start their brand ambassador program some three or four years ago. And uh, any and all traffic that I send their way is appreciated by me and by them. So um, Discount Tackle has top brand good stuff. Um in stock and on sale all the time. Uh, not in stock all the time, kind of depends on the color, depends on how new the stuff is on Discount Tackle, but check them out. Uh, great way to save money and shop on uh, online for the stuff that you're already looking for. So um, I was always a fan of them, shop there regularly before I started working with them. <laughs> Dustin Taylor says, never doubt a DT. Great comment. Um, a couple of DTs in the house. Cast and Chill says, man, what do you think? Uh, do you think the three, three inch Z-Man paddle tails are better than Kytex? Uh, no, not necessarily. I really don't. Um, I like their, uh, their three inch minnows. You know, they make the diesel minnows in the four, five and seven inch. And then the minnows in the three inch, great swim bait, but I uh, I don't necessarily think it's better. Um, I really don't. So, all right, hell is out of here. Have a great night, dude. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for sending the crew along. We've only got a handful more things. Hella, if you haven't left, I'll throw this up. This is the next thing. Hella loves a good vixen, and uh, I. Just started bass fishing uh, realistically like seven years ago. Um, and so I didn't know Jack about the OG Vixen. Uh, really came in having heard about it. And then I know the story about, you know, Tekel working their way into the equation and uh, then Reaction Innovations coming back with it. Some people thinking that it's the same bait. Some people thinking it's not quite as good. but this is the first Vixen that I've ever actually owned. Um, Discount Tackle didn't put this on the new arrivals section of their website, but they do have a handful of colors of this in stock and available. It is full price. It's $24.99, so it's definitely not a cheap walking bait. But um, this is the Silver Shiner color, and I'm curious to see how it performs. I do have a couple kick knockers as well as the kick knocker pups, the smaller version, uh, which I do quite like. But with just how much uh, notoriety this bait has over time, I am very curious to get to know it and be able to give my two cents on how it compares, um, even though I don't have an OG. I will perhaps go out of my way to find one at some point, um, especially if I fall in love with this one, but, uh, yeah, decided to pick up a Vixen because I noticed that they did have them at discount tackle. So silver shiner, this is a cool pattern that, um, is translucent, but also has that foil inside the bait. So even 
as it gets torn up and has tooth marks all over it, you'll still get that flash from inside the bait. Now you get that, that hollow high pitch knocker sound that uh, we all love to hear in a good walking bait. So classic design that arguably inspired many of the walking baits on the market right now. And uh, I'm happy to have one in my possession now. Let me know what are your guys' thoughts about the OG versus the current model of the Vixen? And uh, how many do you have? Do you fish them often? Yeah, Daniel, I know. That's why when Hella said he was leaving, I was like, wait a second. There is actually something in here that would grab his attention. I don't know if he's still in here or if he dipped out right before I threw that on the screen. But, um, yeah, he might own 50% of all remaining OG Vixens. Dude loves a good Vixen. No bone right now? Yeah. That's what I was saying, you know. They don't always have every color in stock and that that's one disadvantage is that uh you know they only re-up every so often so got to keep that in mind you got to be on it check about once a week to uh to see what's new and then if you're about to make an order kind of cycle through the stuff that maybe you were hoping they had other colors in stock but you can also always hit them up or hit me up and i'll reach out to them and uh see if they can restock a couple things because they are a small business and uh it, it's not like tackle warehouse right but they are pretty responsive so speaking of z-man paddle tails here's a new one as of last year um i don't think i have any of these right now this is an unrigged, smaller version of that line-through Molotron that I just showed you. This is a 3.3-inch bait. And they make it in the freaking Slam Shady color, so I'm not mad about that. But same design in terms of having that wedge tail to it. And it's very supple. Um... I got to say, it's softer than a lot of baits in this class, and I like that. It also has this wicked uh, top, top hook slot that is pretty deep, and uh, so that makes me think that you could rig this multiple ways. It has a flat bottom, but you could drop swim this thing. You could throw it on a, a straight jig head. You could throw it on a weedless hook. And uh, leave that that EWG hook laying in that slot on top. So uh, pretty versatile bait. Good design with all those fins on there. And that color pattern, the Slam Shady, is just a dang good one. Designed by the guys over at... Uh, I should remember. But I don't. A couple things left in here. Uh, we're going small, okay? Um, and sorry to be roasting through this stuff, Daniel, as you're trying to scrap to uh, to get the links going. Appreciate you. Daniel's even going so far as to say that this Molotron comes in two sizes, the 3.3 and a 4-inch. Um, I want to say that you probably get 4 to a pack in both sizes, but maybe only 3 to a pack in the 4-inch. Either way, it is a Laztec and will last forever so uh, dustin says look into a slip shad head for that bait six cents knocked one off um yeah so six cents came out with the treble head uh, similar design the slip shad is made by uh lure parts online and uh is a good bait i don't know or is a good piece of terminal tackle i don't know if the slip shad has a better uh, bait keeper on it that would work well with the last tech, but no, surprisingly, Dustin, um, discount tackle doesn't carry much six cents stuff. And I don't know if that's because six cents doesn't want retailers discounting their stuff very frequently or what it is. Um, uh, but they don't really carry much 
six cents stuff. So keep that in mind if you are a big six cents guy or gal. Sorry, Carol. And maybe one or two other ladies that are in here. Okay. So next up are just some, some worm weights. Um, I guess flipping weights. Um, these are a one eighth ounce. So they often have great deals on these right here. This is a one eighth ounce green pumpkin tungsten flipping weight. They come five to a pack. And these were like three ninety nine. dollars So really good deal for a tungsten weight. And they're, they're stamped on there. Tells you that they're a one eighth ounce. So always appreciate that. Um, they're high quality. And so I do Texas rigging with smaller baits as well. Um, and I could see this being an awesome weight size for something like this dude with the three inch Yamacraw or something of the sort. Um, you know, if you're just trying to downsize your presentation, but you still want to be flipping around or dragging a Texas rig, flipping into heavier cover, um, one eighth ounce Texas rig. And then last but not least, did get some of the Kitek Mono Spin Jigs. Um, all in the 1 16th ounce. So going super light here. Now keep in mind, once you throw a trailer on here, they're going to be a little bit heavier than a 1 16th. But this is kind of BFS territory, right? My BFS setup is a little bit hung up here. Um, but... BFS is something that I wanted to get into more uh, last year and did throw a fair amount and caught some good fish on. Was very happy with the setup. This is the Dobbins Sierra series in uh, their Ultra Finesse casting rod. It's a 6.5 one piece that, that goes from uh, 1 16th to 5 16th. It's a light power moderate action with an extra fast tip and this is the shimano slx bfs reel that is still for some reason not available stateside you do kind of have to buy it off of a jdm retailer but um michael will the real slam shady please stand up yes so it was salt strong the dudes at salt strong uh, two brothers that uh, have a podcast, and I guess it's more of a, a blog than anything, but they have a YouTube channel, super informative. Um, they are saltwater fishermen, but they have paired up with Z-Man on a number of baits to make this specific color, and uh, Slam Shady's a proven great color. So, Mono Spin Jig is just a tiny ball head jig and i'm gonna pair one of these up for you just see what she looks like because these at 1 16th of an ounce have a number three hook in them and have a finesse skirt so i wonder what size trailer would be ideal on this because, boy, are these small. Uh, I have a couple of these, and I don't know exactly where they are, so I decided to grab a couple more of them. You get that finesse cut skirt and that tungsten ball head on there. I wonder if... Yeah, I mean, the, the shindig would work well. The boost and Ned would work well. Um... I had the uh, the Kitek little dudes around here somewhere. But we could throw a shindig on there. See what she looks like. Um, now this bait is probably a little bit too long. It's the six cents shindig at 3.2 inches. I think it's perhaps a little bit big, but uh, let's thread it on and find out. I would probably cut off 
Yeah. A good half inch or more of the bait. So I am going to just tear off that much. Most of this bait is tail, but let's go ahead and see how she looks when threaded on here. Now keep in mind, I'm rushing this. Um, I do like to take my time when I am rigging up jigs, but here's what this bad boy looks like. And that's not too shabby. A lot of tail, but it's going to flow nicely in the water. Um, I like the way that looks. Um, I would also consider throwing something like the Yum Ned Craw or something of the sort. A little small three inch profile, maybe even two and a half inches. A lot of the uh, TRD baits, TRD Craw and Hogs and a uh, few others would work really well on the back of this as well. But great little micro jig does have a thin um, weed guard on it as well. And these are a pretty good deal at Discount Tackle as well. So $3.49. Not the, the cheapest little micro jig, but super high quality. You get what you pay for. So that does it. We've got two Berkeley Cole Shads in the 8-inch at $13.49 a piece. One Vixen at full price, $24.99. Z-Man LT Molotron, 6-inch. $11.04. Three of the Kitek mono spin jigs at $3.49 a piece. Z-Man Molotron 3.3 inch at $4.24. And then the tungsten weights from Departure Outdoors at uh, $3.99. So $81 for this month's unboxing. Pretty happy about it. As well as the couple baits that I showed you from Bass Pro. In, uh, what did I call this one? The, uh, I wanted to call it the cranky, but I know that's not right. Um, what did I call it? The crank 60, the cranking 60 with this little do here with that wicked flash on there, ghost shad. And then this dude in brown craw, which is a matte finish. And then the wake up call, which I already threw in my wake bait box, but that jointed wake bait. So pretty happy about it. And we kind of roasted through that unboxing just because I'm excited and we've got a lot of people in here. Maybe I was trying to retain some of the attention. Um, happy to pivot and talk about anything else you guys want to. I am super excited about the fact that. Um, it has been kind of a mild winter here and spring is right around the corner. So there have been days where I could have gone fishing um, had I been able to buy the time. But unfortunately, with work, uh, just wasn't able to make it out on the water yet. Uh, work is is different for me this past year than it has been in previous years. So um, I will have to be a bit more creative in getting out early and then uh getting out of work early and negotiating with my wife being clear about the fact that there will be a couple hours of fishing before I get home after working, uh, before dinner time. So, you know, it's just going to be a, a different ball game in terms of finding the time to fish, but still trying to get out, you know, a legit 50 to a hundred days this season. Um, you know, a good few times a week is my goal. So we will see. You know, I want to say last year I was probably out uh, like three days a week. And so if you extrapolate that out, you know, that's probably a little shy of a hundred times. And uh, it had been more than that for the past handful of years. So this is probably going to be a slightly slower year for me, but I've got so much new tackle 
And uh, I have, how do I say, dialed it in on a number of bodies of water where there will be specific times of year that I absolutely want to be there within a tight window of time. So um, I'm excited about the year coming up. I'm excited about a bunch of new baits. And, uh, you know, I will need to take inventory of what I have really purchased this past year to make sure that I don't neglect too much. But um, feel free to to fly in and ask questions since, you know, I'm not going to be just showing you a whole bunch of stuff for the rest of this stream unless you want to see it or you ask about something specific and I happen to have it right behind me. So um, let's pivot that way. Yeah, it really is. Um, the 16th, the 8th, and the quarter are all awesome deals. You know, it gradually goes up in price from there. But uh, they're good weights. And they're cheap. So if you need them, you ought to get them. That's what I'm saying, DT. Both of y'all DTs. Yeah, Gobi Bryant, um, funny enough, was uh, is another brand ambassador from Discount Tackle, a guy that I know pretty well, um, Brent, who is a uh, kind of like me. He was a, a former, I shouldn't say totally former, but he was very active on Instagram with um, – fishing stuff for a number of years. And so he joined shortly after me was one of the first guys um, and managed to get his, his own kind of custom color. I don't know if he made a deal with Z man or if they just liked his name and, and had the conversation with him and sent some of their baits in that color to him, but pretty sweet as well. And uh, is definitely a good color. Ooh, Oregon small jaw. That that is a good idea, and I honestly don't have many colors in the micro goats, but that would be a great pairing. Um, not necessarily with these colors, but if I got a different color, that would work well. Would not need to do any trimming whatsoever. Now, some people like to do the whole contrast thing. To me, that um, messes with my personal confidence so i don't do it very frequently unless i'm on the water and don't really have another option so um i will do it if i have to but i don't um frequently choose to do so but let's go ahead and rig one of these puppies up just to see how it looks on there And honestly, that looks really good size-wise. Um, micro goat. FTW, you know what I'm saying? For the win. That is a, a great little pairing. Z-Man came out with their micro, their BFS soft plastics. This past year and uh, that lengthwise is flawless. So good recommendation on that. Thank you, man. Oh, yeah. No, I, I don't want to. Um, for the whole fourth quarter, I felt like that that game was rigged. Not too happy about it. Um, I just kind of knew what the outcome would be from. Well before the game started, unfortunately. And I was not rooting for the damn Chiefs. Uh, they're in the Broncos division. I've never liked them. While I have respect for Mahomes, that uh, they were absolutely not the best team in the league this year. And it chaps my ass that they just, they can scrap like no other team. So, bugs me. I was rooting for the Niners, but there was no way I was putting money on that game given who the Chiefs are, and I just I knew that was going to happen. Dustin Taylor, 
just ordered some flipping weights. Well, good on you, dude. Uh, did you copy paste the link? Uh, if you didn't, it, it doesn't bother me. But um, if you guys are going to make an order from Discount Tackle, please do use my link. Um, helps me out, especially helps my relationship with Discount Tackle, given that I'm not uh, frequently posting content on Instagram and YouTube, aside from like these monthly unboxings showing you guys what is new at Discount Tackle, stuff that I really like, and the reasons that I'm purchasing things from Discount Tackle. Um, you know, I don't, I don't make a significant amount of money um, through the affiliate link, but any little bit helps, you know, uh, especially to maintain the relationship, and let them know that I'm doing my job in uh, sending traffic their way. So thank you, Dustin. And yes, Daniel, I uh, appreciate it. So if you wouldn't mind, if you guys are interested uh, in ever shopping at Discount Tackle, just copy paste that link uh, right now up until the AFF equals three uh, and just bookmark it. You know, save it for another time. If ever you're going to check at Discount Tackle to see what is new and just peruse the website or you have something specific in mind and want to make a purchase, use that link. It'll just take you to the homepage. Um, it won't change the shopping experience whatsoever. There's no promo code you need to add. Um, but just using that link lets them know that I sent you there. Okay. Appreciate y'all. So cast and chill. Great question. Um, there are, um, a few obvious observations that I have. Um, I want to feel as confident in using a bait caster on, um, uh, ultra finesse applications but if we're being honest um it is tricky if you're working beyond say 20 yards um so a, a spinning rod will absolutely be my choice if i'm fishing from long distance um, i've not been able to dial in the setup especially with super light weights to be able to make long bomb casts uh, so that is an issue for me, uh, but I always prefer to fish a bait caster if I can. Um, so I I put a lot of time into it last year just for the sake of getting to learn it. Um, and I like the way that it fishes certain baits. So I will spend more and more time doing it and dialing that in and we'll keep you guys posted. But I do keep my line pretty light. I'm throwing... Um, I want to say eight pound braid, maybe 10 pound braid on here. And then if I'm using a leader, I'll go to a four pound fluorocarbon leader. Um, for most applications, if I'm throwing top water or I want to keep the bait high in the water column, I'll go to a four pound mono leader. But, um, that is my deal. Um, uh, so I, I will fish most applications that way, but it's got to be within striking distance for sure. Um, I, I can't cast to the other side of the pocket that I'm in or anything like that. It's got to be, um, you know, within a reasonable distance of say 50 feet or less. And I would disagree with that. Um, I've had some great success on a drop shot with BFS gear. So, um, I've just, I've thrown the drop shot a lot over the last few years. And so that is one application that I really wanted, uh, BFS to work out with because that was one of the main reasons that I felt the need to bring a spinning setup with me is that I always wanted to have a drop shot with me. Um, you know, especially if I'm, at sight fishing of any kind like a drop shot is my number one confidence bait these days for the last couple of years um when i'm sight fishing i like to be able to control the depth at which that bait is sitting above the bottom and um i'd prefer to fight a fish on a bait caster um and that's just what's happened over time for me. You know, I grew up as a fly fisherman. I like the drag to be able to do the work. 
Um, and it, it takes a little bit of time to make that transition. You know, it feels more natural to be able to use a spinning rod in reel and be able to hear the drag peeling and easily loosen or tighten that drag when you need to. Um, but I like the way a bait caster feels in my hand. And this BFS uh, Corrado does have the clicking drag. Uh, so I absolutely love that. Just like you'd get on, um, you know, a couple of higher end reels. Um, that makes a huge difference for me. So uh, the the drop shot on a BFS was successful for me. I, I caught a giant catfish. Well, I, I shouldn't say a giant catfish, but a giant fish that happened to be a catfish. Probably a, a six to eight pound fish. And uh, it took me almost 10 minutes to bring them in last year on a drop shot on the BFS setup. And that was super cool, uh, fun to experience. Made me a little nervous that the rod would break, but it did not. Uh, definitely nervous that the line would break, and it did not. So, um, yeah, keep that in mind. I... I think any application could work. It's just a matter of how far are you from the fish. Uh, if you're trying to make a long bomb cast and you're using braid as your main line, uh, you are going to backlash because you're using light line and you're trying to bomb the thing and you're trying to loosen up the tension knob on that thing. Um, you're going to zip it and it's going to backlash and it's going to be a problem. So that can be annoying. Uh, whereas on a spinning reel that doesn't happen. So, um, or nearly as often, I mean, sure you're going to get wind knots and stuff like that, but, um, if I need to make long casts, I'm, I'm going to be bringing a spinning setup and I've got two or three spinning setups that will do the same type of deal, uh, ranging from a, a five, six ultralight to a six, six medium that will all do the same thing. You know, even my seven foot um medium light is what i used to use for a drop shot so uh it's not like i don't throw spinning setups i do but it, i'm trying to figure the bfs out and uh, i want to go that route if i can michael bradley no problem dude thank you for stopping in and hanging out for a while we have lost a little bit of uh, coverage in here. We got 28 people in, so happy Friday night. Thank you for hanging out. I'm about to pour my third little small whiskey. We'll keep the conversation going. If you have questions, comments, whatever you want to talk about, throw it my way. I have um, a lot of opinions. Doesn't mean they're right or wrong, uh, but I like to tinker with tackle. I like to try new techniques. Um, I like to buy new gear, so I am fairly up to date on uh most things mainstream when it comes to tackle so let me know what it is that you're curious about or what your favorites are um you know i have a couple of tackle boxes full of bfs stuff now a bunch of soft plastics that are dedicated to bfs and uh essentially could go fishing and bring nothing but bfs and i could do anything with that setup, um, it's not like I'm only throwing one or two techniques with it, but yeah, I'm, I'm still organizing. So we got small square bill crankbaits like the, the Bill Lewis tiny gnat. We got small, uh, walking baits like the new striking bitsy dog and they're, uh, Bitsy Splash, tiny little crankbaits, uh, like the Imakatsu Baby Bats, or Little Bats, I forget what they call about uh, call it, and ton of little small jerkbaits. You know, I like to bridge the gap between ultralight bass fishing and ultralight trout fishing. Living in Colorado, I have a lot of streams and a lot of rivers close to me. So, um, I do fly fish a lot, but I like to 
transfer over and throw a lot of lures for trout as well. Um, and I have a variety of different trout species as well as uh, pike that are around me a lot. There, uh, musky can be found, but uh, it's mostly trout if it's not bass. And, you know, I've, I've had to seek out bass over the last seven or eight years. And, um, you know, I've got a good 10 or 12 bodies of water that I really prefer to go to. But uh, a few of those I frequent more often than the others. And there's a bunch that I could drive to that are within a few hours driving distance. But given where I am in my life, having three kids eight years and younger. Um, I usually don't have, you know, a 12 or 14 hour day on my hands to be able to get out and uh, make a long drive and explore a body of water all day long. So if I can steal away for a couple of hours, um, I'm doing it. You know what I'm saying? Your favorite so far is a pegged one eighth Texas rig with a bullet weight and a baby rage crop. Dude, that that's a great little combo. I like the baby rage bug um, a little bit more than the rage craw, but both are awesome. You know, the rage craw is a little bit more in line with what you get with the, the Yama craw. But uh, awesome presentation. I hear you. Um, I'm with it. Yo, know, I'm 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 with you. The Detroit Lions were awesome this year. Great contenders and uh I was rooting for them come the playoffs. So, I was disappointed to see uh how it ended for them, but also wasn't totally surprised. The play call was a little bit aggressive, you know. Could have just taken the points two different times in the game. Um you know, the whole kicking situation was a debacle. Hopefully that evolves moving forward, but Great team. Love me some Awan Ross St. Brown, so I'm with you. What's my take on jig rattles or rattles in general? Um, so jig rattles, I don't love as much as rattles thrown into soft plastics, but um, obviously I like rattles in hard baits more, uh, but rattles in soft plastics I do sometimes. Not, not all that often. But uh, I do prefer a more subtle approach in general. Now, I like the rattle and Ned. I like to throw rattles into, say, like the Yum Ned Dinger, which is made to put rattles in the nose. And I did buy the Z-Man Rattle Snaker to be able to insert rattles into any soft plastic that I want to. So um, it's not like I don't believe in it. Um, I am about it. I just don't do it every time I go out fishing. So um, I think it can make a difference. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's my go-to or like the first thing that I do. But uh, if I believe in the presentation and I'm just looking to make a subtle change, I will throw a rattle into a soft plastic. So good question. You say you had really good luck this summer pitching jigs in deep water uh, grass with rattles on them. Yeah, so I, I find that rattles on jigs tend to be a little bit bulky for me. I like a jig to be kind of a compact presentation, like a Texas rig. Um, and I find that it's it's kind of distracting more than anything for me. Um, just a confidence thing. But I like the concept of rattles for sure. Frank says, Rapala ultralight poppers on the BFS, Tyler. No doubt. Um, I don't have the tackle box with me, but I have plenty of those ultralight poppers. Uh, probably five of them in that box that uh, is my go-to BFX. <laughs> Did I say BFX? It's my go-to BFS uh, hard bait box. And I, at this point I have two of them now, but uh, yeah, that one I'm trying to consolidate into one of baits that I'm more likely to frequently use, but it does range from poppers and walking baits, crank baits, uh, wake baits, jerk baits and so a little bit of everything when it comes to hard baits and uh yeah 
definitely includes the new Mega Bass BFS baits. Um, I have. So if you want, I can run and grab that box for you and show you some of those. Um, I have both of them. You know, the X70 is a more narrow classic uh, jerkbait profile, and I believe it rides higher in the water column and maybe even floats up. The X80 is a, a beefier, taller body and does suspend just a hair lower in the water column. But uh, both are great baits, and I'm excited to have bought them and will be putting them to use a fair amount this year. So um, Ultralight and BFS jerk baits are a confidence bait for me, especially when it comes to trout fishing. So uh, I don't always fish in current, and so I don't always need a sinking jerk bait. And so those two really you know, bring a lot of confidence into my world when it comes to baits that ride higher in the water column and baits that will suspend that have that jerk bait action that can be swim on a straight retrieve or on a, a twitch twitch suspend type of retrieve. So good question, DT. Uh, you could be right. You know, it's possible that I haven't dialed it in. I think a lot of uh, what I've done is is been throwing really lightweight baits on here. So it's possible that I'm not pushing it to its limit to see just what it's capable of. I'm sure that if I'm throwing three sixteenth ounce, um, you know, and really like pushing the limits of what the reel and the rod are capable of, that I'd be able to get a whole lot more casting distance out of them. But if I'm throwing a a one eighth or a one sixteenth ounce uh, presentation. It's just, there's only so much you can do, you know, especially when you're trying to dial in the reel, it doesn't always cooperate. So that said, you could absolutely be right. Douglas, I love to hear that. My kids can't either. There have been a number of times this off season that my kids are, uh, you know, they see me tinkering with my fishing gear and they start asking um, and they remember when they were little kids um, and I, I put them in a couple of YouTube videos or uh, Instagram live streams and they love rewatching that shit. It's like they're in elementary school now, my five and eight year old, and uh, they know about YouTube and think that it's cool. And so who knows, maybe this upcoming year you'll see them in uh, some live streams if we do it earlier at night. Or just a random YouTube video um, at that. So we will see. But my kids can't wait to go fishing. Even my two-year-old son. He's about to turn three next month. But um, we went fishing two or three times last year. He was just excited about the idea of going fishing and having fishing gear of his own. I've had tackle boxes for my kids with lures that don't have hooks on them. Uh, like their entire lives. So they like to play with baits just like I do. Uh, they like to look at them. They like to shake them and hear the rattles. They like to pretend, you know, of what the bait does in the water. And they like to know what the name of the bait is, at least in terms of category. So it's funny. All my kids have known, you know, what a walking bait is, what a jerk bait is, what a crank bait is, um, what a chatter bait is since they could start talking. And that that is super fun for me. So I'm with you. And uh, I can't wait to get my kids out fishing this year as well. So I fish both, but I would say exposed more frequently. I like to use the, uh, you know, weedless exposed hooks more so than the weedless EWG hooks. So I would say... Uh, if between those three styles of hooks, I probably throw the, the weedless exposed. So let's just refer to the Z-Man finesse shrooms hook and the weedless finesse shrooms hook. And then like the, whatever, we can just call it a weedless EWG Ned hook. I probably throw the weedless finesse shrooms style hook about... 35 to 40% of the time I throw the 
full exposed hook like another 30% of the time and then a EWG weedless net hook the remainder, you know, that extra 25 or 30% of the time. So it's almost split evenly, but kind of depends on the situation. Obviously, if I'm bed fishing, um, I'm throwing full exposed. If I'm throwing around rocks, I'm throwing the, the weedless with the weed guard on it. If I'm throwing in grass, I'm throwing the EWG. Um, it kind of depends on what the, the bottom composition is and how shallow the water is. Um, what can I see in the water or what do I know about what's there? Um, definitely dictates what I'm going to do. So that varies, but I, I throw all of them. And I throw the Ned Rig uh, a fair amount. If I'm fishing 100 days out of the year, probably throwing the Ned Rig 25 or 30 of those days. So keep that in mind. Dual hardcore shad crank is great. Um, <clears throat> now, you're not talking about the square bill. You're talking about the, you know, plus two, plus three, that type of crank. Um, does have a unique bill. I'm, I'm kind of curious to pull that up and talk about it. Um, Cause I throw that square bill a lot. You know, the dual hardcore baits are awesome because they have a weight transfer system in them, but, uh, yeah, we're not going to get a full rounded, uh, look at it. So I don't even know that this is necessarily ideal for me to go ahead and share my screen and show you guys, but let's do it anyway. So I'll move myself down to the bottom and then we can take a peek at this. Well, I don't even know if I can zoom in on that there. You got to do it like this. So you can't see the shape of the bill. You can just see the thickness of the bill where it attaches to the bait. But, um, You know, they have more of their shad style crankbait. I don't think that's what you're talking about right now. Um, I like to throw the square bill a lot, but the reality is I think all of these crankbaits of theirs have that weight transfer system in them and is wicked. So um, I could be wrong about that. Maybe we need to mute the audio. They're not going to show us the action. They just preview it like that. Boom, 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 boom. That looks more like. Let's go with this 7 plus. Do they have a video of it? Wicked. Oh, when are you going to show it? They're not getting the camera all the way down there to be able to show it. So, Daniel, is it the the bill shape or the bill angle that appeals to you most? You can kind of see it there, right? Um, I have a feeling you're talking about this bend right there of where it attaches to the bait but um you tell me what what are you thinking Jermaine in here hopping into bed late night flow yeah we've been flowing a little bit dude speaking of flowing or poen as you might say on the east coast 
You pulling tonight, dude? How you doing? So Daniel just has the plus one. Okay. I didn't realize that. Um, and sorry that I have Jermaine's comments still on here. I have my phone. I suppose I can look at the DM. Um, so while I look up the plus one, that's a plus two, plus three, MR plus four. You know what? Let's let's do DT a quick favor. Speaking of, this new arrivals page is like one of my favorite websites to go to. Um, I'm I make multiple trips per week here. Snag proof. This new uh, frog style walking bait is in stock. A couple of snag proof uh, frogs couple of new net bait bait fuel baits i'm probably this is a little spoiler alert for next month probably gonna get these swimming worms um maybe one of each variety or perhaps more i've already got some of these other ones and uh if you didn't know i am a believer in bait fuel so if you have comments on that let me know i already talked about these bitsy baits from Strike King. I definitely I didn't even I wasn't showing you. Dag nabbit. All right. Here it is. Here's the snag proof uh walking style bait that has a frog hook in it. Couple other frogs. Cool that discount tackles carrying scum frog now did i say snag proof um well both um am i getting drunk i don't think so net bait swimming worm with bait fuel in it they've got the regular and the magnum it, they're definitely following suit with zoom in putting these 15 to a pack with the regular size for four dollars and seven cents um great colors as well as bait fuel in them. So uh, if you like that type of bait, which I definitely do, it's a lot of the same color patterns, but it's got bait fuel in it. So uh, do it. 15 to a pack. The the Megas or the Fatties come 8 to a pack, just like you get with the Magnum Ultra Vibe Speedworm. The Bee Bug, the Pack of Craw, the pack of chunks in all sizes, they've got them. Zoom Uni Toad. Jury's out on that. I want to say it's an underrated bait, but I don't know for sure. Um, I had some days that I really loved the bait last year. Some days that I um, I couldn't get my confidence up with it. So, got the new gravel dog in. Let's see what colors are in stock, actually, because kind of recent that they got it in stock so we've got a number that are out of stock and then we've got the sexy shad phantom watermelon craw phantom bone craw green orange chili craw and fire craw all in stock and as i mentioned they're on sale 15 percent off so they retail at 10 bucks they're eight dollars 49 cents so keep that kind of stuff in mind um but there's those bitsy baits i was talking about the Bitsy Dog, and the Bitsy Splash. Again, on sale. So don't forget. Sorry I wasn't showing you guys before. I will look at the phone, Daniel. I apologize. I mean, Daniel T hasn't hit me up in a while, so I like to see that and hear it. Oh, shite. Okay, interesting. Take a look at that, Bill. That is weird, Daniel. Uh, whoa. The Shad Crank Plus One 
has the weird bill. Very rounded bill with a little bit of a pointy bottom, huh? Um, I did not know that. I don't think I have any of those, if we're being honest. Just thinking about the way that that is shaped. Um, I would have known about that. I would have said something about it. So, very interesting. <clears throat> I wouldn't quite call it a heart shape, but yeah, you're right. <laughs> Jermaine, it's freaking Friday night, dude. No drinks for you. You're just gaming. What what kind of games are you playing, bro? And guys, we got 24 people in here. What uh, what else do you want to talk about? I've got uh, almost too much on my mind when it comes to fishing gear and thinking about what to throw this spring. It's like part of me just wants to throw big baits for the first month of this season and just go with like the the eight inch coal shad and some bigger glide baits <clears throat> things like that to uh wake up the fish you know perhaps the <clears throat> savage gear line through trout which you know may or may not have been kind of the og version of this guy but in a six and an eight inch version i like those baits a lot is just throwing bigger swim baits while the water's super cold. And then as it starts to gain temperature before the fish move on to beds, then start working in my moving baits, throw as many chatter baits, square bills, spinner baits, things like that as I can. Keep the moving baits going, cover water, get the fish as they're moving up. And then once they're on beds, you already know the deal. I'm, I'm throwing a drop shot, um, probably a lot. Um, <clears throat> as well as a, a weightless Texas rig or, you know, some type of smaller swim bait with an exposed jig head. So um, as much as I like want those to be my focus, I will probably venture some bit. And so I have not done a lot of thinking or exploring or organizing tackle boxes just yet. You know, a swim jig and a chatter bait tend to be uh, big confidence baits of mine throughout the year, as well as a drop shot. But um, I want to explore a bit more this year. And there are a lot of baits that I bought that are either new to the market this year or new to me. And uh, yeah, see, Jermaine says big on the lipless this year. That is one that um, I've had a love-hate relationship with. And um, <clears throat> the lipless and the jerk bait for me, I'm very uh, on again, off again with. And so it's like, do I have lipless crankbaits? A lot of them. Yeah, I do. Um do I throw them day in and day out? No, I don't. Kind of depends on where I'm at, or what time of year it is that I throw a lipless crankbait. And so I would love to throw more of them. And I really, it should be in that kind of mid spring and mid fall that I throw them a lot. And uh, in the past, I have certain years. And then other years, it's like the, the chatterbait has really taking that that top spot so um i don't i don't know it's like i want to throw a flat-sided crankbait more often but will the swim bait take more of that time this year maybe um will i throw a chatterbait versus a lipless versus a spinnerbait versus a square bill more this year i don't know um what are your guys's preferences um I, I appreciate Jermaine saying it's going to be a, a big lipless year for me. Freaking love that. So I, I haven't had a chance to get many of them. I only have the nine inch. 
Um, I have not thrown it yet, but I only have the nine inch Nessie and I definitely see myself throwing a traditional glide bait more often than this one. I mean, I like the idea of these stabilizer fins on top and bottom, but, uh, and again, you get that power bait smell. Um, I, I think it's a good design, but I, I'm not familiar with the action yet. I think I only got my hands on them like at the end of last year or during the off season. So I don't know, but, uh, I'm curious about it for sure, but I, I don't have an opinion yet. So it's on my list of like baits to throw, but probably not commit a tremendous amount of time to, unless I can get my hands on slightly smaller versions. And I would almost go so far as to say the same is true of the six cents panorama. Um, I've only got one or two packs of the bigger sizes and, uh, that kind of puts it into a narrower category for me in terms of what I can do with it. So uh, would I like to try the smaller sizes so that I have a little bit wider variety of where I can use it and what type of fish I'm targeting? Absolutely. Um, but I don't know. The flap slap or the evergreen crossover. So um I have not used them much. I don't have the flap slap. I have the crossover. Um, and I love the concept, right? Um, very cool to think of a bait that is actually truly designed to be a crossover bait where you can straight retrieve it or work it like a jerk bait if you want. But it has that profile that is more a shad style bait. Um, I like it a lot. So... I will be fishing it. I, I just picked it up last year. I don't know exactly what time, but uh, I did not put much time, if any, into it last year. Um, I got a couple of them, um, like middle to late last year, and I really like the concept. So great question, but unfortunately, I don't have a strong opinion on it just yet. Jermaine, I, I mentioned this earlier, but um, I was very curious, just like I'm sure most people were when they heard Milliken talking about it after he won on it. Um, it's hard not to get amped up about it, right? So looked into it, felt a little bit mixed about it. I think the price is perhaps a little bit more than it should be maybe not right i mean it's not crazy but um then i started seeing negative reviews like flowing right when it was released and i feel mixed um not because i'm necessarily going to have the same thoughts but because i don't necessarily love baits that are hypersensitive and uh that's one reason that like you know, this is the mag draft six inch freestyle. It's a reason that I picked up the, the seven inch dangerous swim bait and the eight inch coal shad uh, is that in my eyes, there's a little bit more versatility and forgiveness with the way that the baits are. Um, you can use them in more situations and you can fish them at a wider variety of speeds. And from my understanding so far, the hangover is a, a particular bait. And I know that a lot of big swim baits are that way, but um, I don't have quite enough time on my hands to be able to get out for multiple full days in a row and throw the same bait to get to know well enough to know where to use it and then dedicate a lot of time to it after that, that's just unrealistic for me. So um, that uh, is a little bit intimidating for me. And I, I don't love that it is a uh, speed sensitive bait or that it wants to roll easily. 
uh, straight out of the pack. So I think there's a, a period of time that it takes to dial in and get to know what that bait wants to do, which is totally fine. You know, it is a swim bait after all, but that is not necessarily my preference. So um, if you've already got them, then go ahead and dedicate the time, get to know it. You could probably spend as little as 30 minutes to an hour to uh, to really figure out what what you need to do to make the bait do its job and then just try and do that style retrieve in situations that you think warrant it best and you know, hope for the best turnout. But um, because of that, and because of some of the other top hook swim baits that I've bought, like the Molotron line through top hook and uh, the dangerous loaded swim bait, among a couple of others, you know, mainly the, the Savage Gear six and eight inch line through um, trout baits. I, I don't necessarily see myself getting the hangover anytime soon, but I was on the verge. And I think there was a point where I had them in my cart for a period of time and was about to buy them and then last minute decided not to. So as Frank says, avoid hangovers, stay drunk. Um, yeah, you know, you wake up in the morning you're feeling shitty because you drank too much the night before. What do you do? You drink a mimosa, you drink a beer. At 9 a.m., you do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? Just kidding. That That's me only like two days out of the year. I did that the morning after Thanksgiving or the Saturday after Thanksgiving. Um, and that caused me and my wife to do dry January. She did not love that I did that. Well, 505, the uh, the seven inch Nessie in rainbow trout is probably sweet. So good on you, dude. Um, if I could pick up some seven inch Nessies, I would probably get a couple of them. The nine inch feels a little big. The five inch feels a little small for what it is. I think the seven inch is probably the right size to get. But uh, I don't know. It's just been a timing thing for me. I bought the nine inch when they were in stock. I don't even remember where I bought them whether it was tackle warehouse or discount tackle, but um, I think it was discount tackle. I just, I bought what I could when I could and uh, wanted to see how they look in person. I'm not mad about it, but I'm also not like feeling desperate to throw it right away. Whereas even something like the, the eight inch coal shad, this will definitely get uh preference. And I will throw this in more places than I would the Nessie 9 um, straight out of the gate, right? They both have that bottom hook. But this guy is going to be more versatile. And uh, I can fish it in a lot more situations and in a wider variety of depths in the water column. So, yeah. Look at that. Daniel says, Berkeley has the Nessie in stock at discount tackle right now. Um, vamos a ver, or let, let's go look. Um, again, this is kind of what I explained with the Vixen. They won't necessarily put it on the website in terms of it being new to the website. It just comes in stock. So here we go. Nine inch, seven inch, nine inch, seven inch. So they have some of the seven inch in stock. Like you could grab a seven inch perch right now for $8.99. So 10% off. Good deal. Nine inch raw, but not the seven inch. Uh, so you'll see that about half of them are out of stock. It's like, here's the thing. If you fall in love with something and uh you know, you're salty that it's out of stock. You really love this burnt bone color, but it's out of stock. You just click this notify me button, put in your email. And the second that it comes back in stock, they will email you. And then you jump over to the website using my link and uh, and buy it while it's in stock. Uh, Discount Tackle, like I said, is a small business. So 
when they stock up, they're probably only buying a quarter or less of what Tackle Warehouse or somewhere else is actually purchasing. Um, and so if it's a super in-demand color and other people are taking advantages, advantage of uh, things like this, of the notify me feature, then you're probably going to miss out. Uh, you have to keep that in mind. So uh, they are not lazy. They're just busy. So um, if there's something that is out of stock or has been out of stock for a while that you'd like to buy from Discount Tackle, all you need to do is reach out to them. They'll probably get on it pretty quick. And, um, you know, the reason I started working with them is actually that I had made a couple of orders there and either something was wrong or something was out of stock that I had ordered. And I was curious, um, I reached out to them, to their customer service, and they did right by me almost immediately. They, they were fantastic. So uh, they process and ship orders fast. They have a great selection and really good prices, perhaps better than anywhere else on a day in and day out basis. And, um, and they do right by their customers. So I was super happy with that. And then they reached out to me after perhaps having checked out my Instagram page. I don't know. Uh, how that happened, but they had the idea to start the brand ambassador program. And that's what kicked that off a while back. So um, I'm a big fan of discount tackle. I'm I'm not saying any of this to try and get you to spend money there. I don't honestly don't care, but uh, I am a believer. There's a reason I work with them and will continue to purchase stuff there um, on a regular basis. So Oregon Smalljaw says, hot take, but I feel Sixth Sense is just pushing way too much stuff out and in return, haven't put the time in to design them very well. That is a hot take. Um, I don't necessarily disagree, but uh, that's an interesting take. I think Sixth Sense is very um, intentional and thoughtful with what they do. So I think Mostly they're just doing what they have to do to not only stay relevant, but uh, keep their loyal customers' attention and bring in money on a regular basis. So while I might agree with part of that statement, I don't know. I, I also think that they have always been pretty detail-oriented and looked for pockets in the market that are either needing a little bit more attention or that are hyper successful and some market share could be shared if you will so that is a hot take and i i don't necessarily agree but i i see where you're coming from for sure i didn't know that raid made a new soft glide i mean i know that megabass does and uh, it's hard to get your hands on, you know, the IU glide or whatever it's called. Um, but depending on how the Nessie does, and I, I'm very well may pick up one or two. I think it's called the IU Twitcher. I don't know. But um, I will try some of those baits just to get a feel for action between the soft plastic and the hard glide baits see if i have a preference um obviously the soft plastics should be and are going to be cheaper uh, bothers me if you're talking about a grow design works you know where they're uh they're pretty expensive not as expensive as a, a hard plastic glide bait or even a, a hard resin or wood glide bait but still almost too much right um so a soft plastic glide bait does appeal to me in general but i don't have enough experience to say what my strong opinion is on when and where to use one over the other or if 
soft glides are the way of the future. I, I honestly don't know. Daniel, that's what's up. Discount Tackle shipping is fast. They process orders and they ship orders quick and they get to you quick. So if that matters to you, keep that in mind. Oregon small job. Yeah, I hear you. Probably that much faster for you with shipping. Daniel's in Kentucky and gets his stuff from them pretty fast. Well, yep. I'm in Colorado. You're in Kentucky. Uh, I'm telling you, you place an order today, they'll ship it out by tomorrow. And uh, and you get it a couple days later. Like it's ever since COVID, it's about twice as fast as Tackle Warehouse. Um uh, It's about what you would expect in this day and age. You get it in a, a few business days. It's solid. So, good stuff. All right, we've been on an hour and 41 minutes. What else do you guys want to talk about? We've got 22 people in here right now. Um, I've had a, a few of these whiskeys. They've all been small pours, but I am on the verge of needing to pee. Uh, you guys are almost going to need to let me know since it's pretty much just Oregon small jaw and Daniel T and five Oh five fishing, um, participating in the chat. There's 23 of you in here. Chime in. Let me know. Uh, first of all, should I go pee and come back and hang out for a little bit? Or should we just nip this and, uh, call it a, a good Friday night and a fun time together? And let's just say you tell me to, to hang on. What else do you guys want to talk about? Because I, my desk is a freaking mess. And, uh, you know, if I just look around, I'm looking at terminal tackle, baby swim baits, giant swim baits, uh, hair jigs, square bill crankbaits, medium and deep diving crankbaits, jerk baits, oversized jerk baits. Big swim baits, soft plastics, um, jigs, BFS. I've got medium diving crankbaits. I've got flat sided crankbaits. I've got square bills. I've got BFS baits. I've got top waters in the way of walking baits and poppers. I have almost everything that you could think of. I have uh, bait fuel and scents. Wide variety of soft plastics, tons of soft plastics. In fact, if I look down at the ground, uh, you tell me. You want to keep chatting? Do you have? Frank says I'm jockeying buses. Otherwise, I'd have lots to say. Well, I don't even know what that means, but keep jockeying your buses, dude. And five hundred five says I agree with um, on six cents. I'm not the biggest fan of what they've been putting out lately. It seems rushed. Uh, yeah, it definitely seems like they're trying to kind of keep up with the market and knowing that there are, it, with any given brand, you need to put out a handful of new products per year. So I do like the fact that they have disrupted the market and decided to do that in the middle of the year. They're not doing that at the Bassmaster Classic or at iCast, but just when it's ready or when they feel like it or during the off season, just whenever other people aren't doing it. It's like all of a sudden you weren't expecting it, but boom, 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 out come a bunch of new products. It's a good way to sucker a bunch of people, right? Um, whether they're good products or not. So Daniel says, the thing I will say for Six Sense is their paint jobs are usually top notch. Yep. And, uh, you know, that's honestly why I went out of my way. This is not Six Sense. This is Bass Pro Shops. Trying to take a page out of Six Sense's book and grab some paint jobs and terminal tackle and a good price point. And uh, grab some of that market that is people who are looking for a good quality product. Um, 
a pleasing to the eye product, you know. Sure, they're selling fishermen. We got, oh, we got all these details when it comes to the gill plates. I don't know how much of that you can see. There you go. So you got all these slits on the body, and then you get multiple layers of gills. You get that bulged eye with that matte eyeball. And I'm throwing stuff around. Subtle rattle. Um, it's quality, right? I mean, you get that same blank in body. You get that white paint job. That translucent clear body with a little bit of the flash built into it. That red eye. Green back. It's nice. I haven't seen it swim, but I'm happy about it. All right, I guess there's 23 people in here. I guess I'll go pee real quick since you guys aren't responding. And we'll hang out for a little bit longer. Think about questions, comments, concerns that you have within specific bait categories. Um, I will weigh in however you want. We can talk about anything from micro too big uh, or anything mainstream doesn't matter to me i have the six inch trays i don't know what rrp means bruce um the rate of what what is rrp I'll tell you when I get back from peeing, I don't have a, uh, a beer bottle or anything to pee in, and I'm not going to mute you. I'm just going to run upstairs and pee real quick. I'll be back in two minutes. And we're back. Regular retail pricing. I think they're five ninety nine. Um, pretty sure that's what I paid for them. And they're high quality, so you know, uh, perhaps a dollar more than what you would have paid for a Bass Pro Square Bill before. Right around the same price that you'd pay for a. Um, KVD and maybe a dollar less than what you'd pay for a Lucky Crap. So good price, awesome paint jobs, good hardware, not great, um, but probably doesn't need to be changed. So keep that in mind. I am 
Not mad about it. Still got 22 people in here. Appreciate you guys. 505, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but um, first, I'm going to be throwing big baits. So I'm going to try and dedicate more time to big swim baits. Uh, there will be some that are higher in the water column, like glide baits, uh, floating and just have your slow sinking baits that I can work higher in the water column. And there will be some that are more slow sinking baits or uh, creeping style baits like a Huddleston or an eight out eight inch cold shad or, um, you know, I've, I've got a few down here, the the bigger mag slow baits or an eight inch mag draft uh, baits that I can fish in the middle bottom or even on the bottom. But swim baits will, will take a big part of my first couple of weeks of fishing. And then once it starts to warm up a little bit and the water gets above say 50 degrees, that is when it becomes kind of a, a wild game for me where I will throw a mix of swim baits, chatter baits, spinner baits, lipless crank baits, square bills, flat sided crank baits, um, a little bit of everything that is medium to fast moving um, baits until the fish move up. So Kind of depends. And then I will slow way down. And that's when I will go to a drop shot, a Ned rig, um, and put the bait in their faces when I know either where specifically they are or where they should be. But while they're on the move, I will be moving my, my presentations with them. So uh, it's usually not until uh, like post spawn that I start throwing. Uh, grass specific baits. I will still throw a lot of chatter baits and swim jigs then, but um, at that point, then I will also throw frogs and a lot more jigs. Um, I will throw jigs during the, the spawn and I probably should throw them more year round than I do, but um, yeah, hopefully that kind of answers your question. The one thing Sixth Sense has come out with that I'm excited about is a finesse compact swim jig. You know how killer their swim jigs are. Um, yes, I do. And I will say that one of the baits that I'm, I'm very excited about um, is the six inch whale. Um, you know, to throw in a few different ways. It's like, I, I give a lot of attention to the mag draft freestyle, but the whale I think will be a very similar bait uh, with a slightly different action. Similar type of uh, density in terms of soft plastic. So it will probably be speed sensitive, but have a little bit more head wag in addition to tail kick. Its tail is almost um, reversed. So the six inch whale does appeal to me, uh, but in a, a similar presentation, similar application as what you'd get with the mag draft freestyle. So um, I'm with you on that, but um, I I don't necessarily know about the, the finesse compact swim jig. I I don't know that I've actually seen that, uh, but I, I do like a good compact swim jig. Uh, I like the, the missile baits. Uh, I think it's an Ike series swim jig. I like the, the Strike King. Smaller swim jigs. Uh, there's a few that I throw a fair amount that are different than the, the full size or main swim jigs that I throw.
so yes, Frank. In fact, I don't know if you would have seen, but on my BFS right now and since, I don't know, late summer, early fall, um, I was throwing a wacky rigged Zoom Swamp Crawler, weightless, uh, and sometimes weighted, but the Swamp Crawler is uh, a bait that not many people talk about very often that I love and talk about somewhat frequently. I mean, I have it up on my wall. I talk about it uh, pretty often. I only have a couple packs sitting here. Watermelon Moon Dust and Morning Dawn that are sitting here. But I've probably got black and green pumpkin among maybe one of the two colors or one or two other colors that are uh, kind of regular for me. But I, I throw the swamp crawler a lot and I like it a lot. So um, but whether it's weightless or on a drop shot um, or even on a weighted wacky rig or God forbid... <laughs> on a shaky head you know owner makes a couple shaky heads um one of which is is very lightweight they make it all the way down to like a 1 16th or a 1 8th ounce and that one is very good but i do throw a uh a wacky rig or weightless texas rig uh bfs worm it's usually the swamp crawler, but there's a couple of others. Daniel says, uh, looking on Bass Pro's website, website, most of their new crankbaits are $5.99, but I guess they range from $4.99 to $7.99. I did not know that. Um, interesting. So yes, I. This is kind of a year to year situation for me. Uh, I do throw shad wraps, um, and I also throw the Berkeley flicker shads a fair amount. Um, it kind of depends on what the fish are doing. If I'm on a specific body of water where the fish are deeper and I learned that, then yes, I I will come back and fish uh, a shad wrap or a flicker shad a little bit deeper and relate to the bottom. Uh, knowing that I'm going to lose some of those baits and so be it, but I... It's hard to say. I, I don't throw them year in and year out. Uh, I don't throw them throughout the year. Uh, so it, it, it kind of depends, but I do have a lot of them and I like them. So the short answer is yes. The long answer is kind of depends on the year and what the fish are doing. And spinner baits, um, my go to spinner baits. Um, uh, I throw the war Eagles a lot. I throw, um, uh, I don't even have my box close by, but, um, I'm not super particular other than say the blade size. I prefer a, a smaller blade size and I prefer, um, willows to colorados but personally uh unless i'm night fishing i will throw a colorado blade but i prefer willows like a double willow spinnerbait the vast majority of the time but that's that's just where i am and what my confidence level is so uh, you got to take that with a grain of salt uh, because you know i'm relatively newer to bass fishing and I have not put a tremendous amount of time into spinner baits. So when it comes to confidence, um, 
they double willow is kind of where I go first. Um, and then a, a single single Colorado and then a, a hybrid style, uh, you know, one of each is probably where I go after that. But Are you calling me Ty? I appreciate that, dude. Kirk, my man. So it kind of depends on the size of the bait. You know, I have two setups that I'm throwing these days. Um, one is more of a 200 size reel with a... Dobbins 795 SB and the other is like a 300 size reel with a um, St. Croix what is it it's not a Bass X but it's, it's something in that sort of range um I don't, I don't remember, but I, I should bring down some of my rod and reel setups for you. Hey, you know, it just so happens that I happen to have my BFS setup down here, but that's extremely rare. Um, I usually don't have my setups down here. So if I'm going to dedicate a specific live stream toward a particular topic, then I will bring those setups down here, but I don't have them on me. So I, I can't say right now, but you know, it's a seven nine swim bait setup that is like up to two or three, two to four ounces. And then I want to say my main swim bait setup is like it could be as low as three and as high as eight ounces. Um, I don't have anything above eight ounces, so if I were to throw Big ass baits, you know. I would say like a a depths two fifty or an ice uh, mega bass ice slide two sixty two are probably pushing the range of my bigger swim bait setup. Um, and yeah, that that's about as far as I go. And I don't, I don't like to go bigger than a, a 300 size reel. And that's not even my preference. Yeah, Bruce. I mean, I you've probably looked at them more than me at this point. I just stumbled across them and was like, oh, man. Uh, these 1.5 and 2.5 baits look good. Um, like way better than I ever would have thought. I didn't know that Bass Pro was doing this, but uh, I feel the need to try them out and at least explain it to you guys. Show them. The Raid 2-Way? Dude, okay. Well, um, yeah, I will say that there are a few baits as well as, you know, you guys know probably that I tie my own jigs and I also tinker with baits. So there are a, a few baits, especially the Laztec baits, that I'm going to thread silicone through um, and mess with that whole concept that is that came from the, the OSP dice rubber, right? So I'm with you on that. I don't know about the raid two way. I have probably thrown in my cart multiple times at um, the hookup tackle. I don't know, three or four times and never actually pulled the trigger. And I wouldn't say it's because of price necessarily, but a four inch Senko wacky is an awesome presentation. Um, as is the three inch. You know, and this last year, Yamamoto came out with the five inch fat Senko. So there's a, a lot of different things to do. The, the three inch Senko has been out forever. They came out with the three inch 
floating Ned floater uh, this past year. So good on Yamamoto for mixing it up a little bit um, in terms of capitalizing on what they do well, knowing what profile fits people the best. XPS flat side is listed at 799. Um, I did not even know that the XPS made a flat side this year. That's interesting. Daniel says this past year I had better luck at night with the double willow than I did at Colorado. Interesting. Um, that's usually not the case for me. Um, you know, I do better with wake baits than any other bait at night. But if I'm throwing a spinner bait, uh, usually some type of willow, whether it's a single, like I said, or a combination, uh, you know, a willow and a Colorado is kind of where I go. Did I say a single willow? I, I meant a single Colorado, but either way, I um, like to throw a mix. Legend. Who's a legend? Triumph. I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. So yes, five hundred five. I do throw soft jerk baits. Uh, the baby Z two for me. I don't throw like a a standard soft jerk bait. Uh, I throw that on a a drop shot. So, uh, I always have the baby Z two. Um, on me it's a bait that i almost can't go fishing without uh, if i forget to bring it that's a problem um, and i i bring it in a a variety of different colors like look how twisted that one up is that that would bother me like i might just toss this pack out because there's one left in it um but it's such a productive bait for me, even when I'm drop shotting it, that uh, that even if it was tweaked like that. Look, here's another pack with just one in it. But this one is flawless. Uh, this is the Ghost Shad color. No, gray glimmer pearl. Um, I honestly, I love this bait. I throw it a lot. Um, so on a drop shot, this is up there with my top favorite baits of all time. Um, and I, I showed you guys on like the last live stream that I did. Um, I like to stretch this bait out and bring the salt out. So I don't know if I did it with this one. I think I did it with a different color. So I'm not going to do this over the laptop, but let's just say you saw the before. Here's the after. Um, you can see how much more roughed up this bait looks after I stretch it out and take some of the salt out of it. Um, the before is going to lead it to do a little bit more of a traditional Laztec wood and have it kind of stand up with the tail up. Not completely, but after you stretch it out, this bait is just going to sit perfectly upright. Um, I mean, it, it's a remarkable bait. So, yeah, I, I don't want more of these selling than they should because they're already hard enough to get their hands, to get your hands on. Um, that's just the way that it goes. Yeah, I, I should take it easy. Maybe you're heading out of here tonight. I don't know. But 
the striking baby z2 is one of the best on the market um i will throw the z2 but not like a fluke a zoom fluke um and there's a couple of baits on the market that do a similar thing i just prefer the zoom fluke more than others um even though the way that they're stored in the package you probably get half or three quarters of a pack that are good and the remainder that are not usable um the the price is right and the bait is good so i i tend to throw the zoom super fluke a lot uh i don't throw the super fluke junior very often um that's uh, i don't know why that's just me I throw the soft plastic jerk bait a fair amount uh, throughout the year. Uh, that's not a specific time of year style bait for me, uh, but throughout the year. Um, I would say kind of late spring through the early spawn is where I, you know, early pre spawn or post spawn um, is where I throw it the most. Um, is if I don't know exactly where the fish are set up, but they're moving up there, I I throw it in the zones where they ought to be to uh, to get a feel. And then if I know exactly where they are, if I'm sight fishing, that's when I'll, I'll switch to a drop shot and I'll throw something like the Baby Z too. But I'll throw the Super Flute if I know where they should be and I can't see them either due to clarity of water or the way that uh the fish are moving if i see bait balls um then that's kind of a a fluke situation for me but mm, nope i'm not The Zoom Poppin' Frog and the Z-Man Walking Frog. Interesting. Um, I I don't really know much about either of those baits. I know that the Zoom Frogs are huge. And the Z-Man Walking Frog. Um, the Z-Man Walking Frog. I'm struggling to picture that right now. But I suppose we could go online and take a peek. Um, caps lock. Z-Man. Walking frog. So are you talking about the leaps? Because... All right, no, I was not asking her to, uh, to bring that up, but um, if you're talking about the leaps, I have this bait, um, and I feel mixed about it. You know, super soft. And very collapsible. Um, good sharp hooks on it, but it punctures easily. So I feel mixed about that bait. I don't know if that's the one you're talking about, Daniel. But um, both versions of that frog, I I feel mixed about. Um, I have not gotten my hands on the Swamp Lord frogs yet, but I'm going to. Uh, this year will be the year to try them. So we shall see. And there's the Triumph comment. The St. Croix Triumph Legend Victory. Dude, is that three different rods you're talking about or one rod? Um I mean, what? I have a Triumph rod 
that is my drop shot rod, and I have a victory that is a, an all purpose rod for me, but I don't have any legend extreme rods. So, you know, I I definitely like St. Croix. I would say that the uh, the victory is their middle of the line um, and is a, a super high quality rod. I, I like them a lot. There's I have absolutely nothing against them. And I have a all purpose do everything style, like a seven, three medium heavy type of rod like it um the triumph is what is my like seven foot or maybe seven one um medium light and i like it a lot it's a spinning setup it's what was my drop shot rod for years and so i like them a lot but st croix swim bait rod is none of those um it's not a Bass X, but it's a, uh... oh, shit. <laughs> I can't, I can't remember. Um, uh, we could find out pretty quickly, right? It's not a mojo. Is it a Bass X? I don't. I should get it at some point. Um, I can't believe the legend has that that wild handle on it. And I suppose I should be sharing my screen with you as I'm searching the web. That's not the one I wanted to share with you. All right, let's uh, let's do this better. Okay. Rods on St. Croix. Freshwater. We might need to like keyword search this because. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. All right, we're going to do swim bait. Swim my bait, swim my bit. Legend? No. LT? No. I don't know. I'll need to get it for you guys. It's like a, uh, it's almost like a four to eight ounce style rod, uh, if you will. But I don't remember what it is, and I apologize. It's not a Mojo Bass. It could be the Bass X, if we're being honest. Um. I didn't think it was, but 
Could it be the 7-Eleven Heavy? Here I am, the opposite of freaking Halabas, who knows all of his rods, like, in and out. You know what I mean? So, if I had to guess, it's the Bass X extra, extra heavy, fast, but that doesn't sound right. Um, I mean, that one's weighted four to eight ounces, so... Still not the one I want to show you. Present. What I wanted to show you is here. Um, is this four to eight ounce? But I, it doesn't quite feel right. I don't know. We will check it out another time. I will show you guys. Um, you know, and honestly, I I didn't think I would feel as drunk as I am, but I am. So I'm going to pour just a sip here. And we're going to wrap this puppy up. We've got Bruce, 505, and Daniel. They're like the only ones contributing. 22 people in here. I appreciate you guys. If you haven't already hit the thumbs up, do me a favor and do that real quick. Um, it helps. So swim baits. We've got the Tush jig head. I will be throwing that this year for sure. Um, I'm I'm curious about it and how it performs in a variety of different baits. The core tackle tush. This right here is a four aught. I think this is what you saw in that five inch spark shad. And that's nice. That right there is nice. Um, on the other hand, throw a uh, core tackle tush in a mag draft. And a little bit more difficult, right? All of a sudden, you can tear up the internals of a swim bait. And you've got a, a 6 or $7 swim bait on your hands. And you just destroy the whole thing because maybe the bait's a little bit too hollow, whatever it is. But... It's like all of a sudden this bait needs a lot of mend it and I'm not super happy about that. I think a seven inch um, Z-Man diesel minnows <laughs> would not take quite the beating that this six inch um, Magdraft freestyle would. And rigging it straight up the gut. Obviously, that that would be the play right there. But it's very hard to rig as you want it to. Um,
Yep, still not great. I don't love that. I'm not happy about it. So would you throw the tush in a bait like this? I don't recommend it. You're going to shred it up. Yeah, no, and 505, that's what I typically do. Um, right now, I've got a Scottsboro, a, a Boom Boom, a Rhythm Wave, a Whale. I previously had a Mag Draft in there. And so, no, I, I've got a, a bunch of baits in that category. That I would do the same thing with, and I'm with you on that. Daniel says, I hope to be on social more often. I'm with you, dude. Hate the price of them, but I love the spark chat. Um, yeah. I, I don't know that I necessarily hate the price, but I am with you on that. I do love the spark chat. Uh, I wish they would continue to make. The seven inch spark shed. Uh, keep an eye out for Brendan Brown, aka Brown Baco, as and when I send him this bait right here, which is the seven inch spark shed that is no longer made. Um, he very well might make something of the sort. Walmart knockoff liquid band-aid is cheaper mended alternative. Interesting. I never once thought about that, but that's fascinating. Daniel uses the three inch and the four inch spark shads as trailers. Uh, well, you should keep doing that. Sure, they're going to tear up, but um, they're great baits. It just is what it is. Um now you could mix it up, right? Like I've I've had the same thought, and I know that you'd love to throw the spark shad on this uh Uoze swimmer, right? But to me, the the four inch diesel minnows is an awesome trailer and rarely comes off. So depending on the situation. Um, there are certain other baits that I will mix and match and throw into that scenario. But yeah, uh, the three and four inch spark shad are great. So guys, we got 22 people in here. We've been here two hours and 28 minutes. I really appreciate you. I'm going to get out of here. It's been a good evening. Happy Friday night to you. It's freaking late. Um, although, whatever. Maybe you guys aren't all on East Coast timing. It's not 1.30 where all of you are. You know, it's 11.30 going on midnight for me. So, if you haven't checked out Daniel T. And know that he wrecks him on the Ooze Swimmer. And uh, the Purple Haze Spark Shad. He caught a couple of biggins last year so daniel way to go thank you for being the great moderator that you are daniel thank you for hanging out tonight bruce nichols have a great night yeah it's 1 30 where you are uh it's late but thank you guys for hanging out hope you have a great rest of your night and a good weekend appreciate the support hit the uh the thumbs up if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next one peace